everybody, welcome back to Rain and Paws. I am Mitch, and today I am doing a product comparison video. So the two products that I'm going to be comparing are Triart Liquid Glass, which is a product that's manufactured in Canada, and I am trying Lux Water Effects Clear. So I've seen a lot about this all over Facebook lately. It looks like an awesome product because it's advertised as a substitute for resin, and so is this Triart Liquid Glass. So um, Fluid Art Co is going to start stocking these very soon if they haven't already. And I've been sent a sample bottle to try. And I noticed when I got both of these that they look very similar in the bottle. So I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I've never used either one before. So I'm going to put them through a series of tests to see which one is which. Um, which one's going to perform better, if they're going to perform the same, I have no idea. So I'm going to take you down onto my bench top and we're going to mix these up in a couple of different ways and run a few different tests. Okay, so here we are on my table and I've got three uh, containers each that I'm going to mix up some colours in. So I know that uh, the Triart Liquid Glass is advertised as a pouring medium and a suitable finish for coating your paintings and I've seen some awesome work done with this and I know that the Lux FX is also advertised as a final coating resin substitute so I'm going to be putting those to the test. And I also wanted to see if this will give you a, a pouring medium-like effect, I guess, um, because you can mix in glitters and mica powders and all sorts of stuff with this. I've seen that done. So I want to put these two side by side and see exactly what the big deal is about. So I'm going to be giving honest observations and just, you know, having a play around. Like I said, I've never used either product before, so this is really exciting. Um, I've also been wanting to branch out from blooms for a little while now, so this is a great chance to try things um, other than my bloom pouring medium. So I'm going to get started with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on some gloves as always and I'm going to mix in three different colorants into these containers and what I have to remember with this is that I'm not using a cell activator. I'm using pouring medium and I'm going to do my little tests onto some six by six inch canvases and I've just taped up the bottom of those and I've written the name of which uh, product I'm going to be using on the bottom of each so I don't get confused. So my idea with this test is to mix both um, mediums with a tube paint, an acrylic ink and a pigment and see how they perform with each one of those added. And I know that I have seen um, Victoria Wynn who created the Lux Water Effects she said in her videos that you, uh, in her, you, what am I saying? I know that Victoria Wynn has stated that she does mix Floetrol with um, the Lux Water Effects, so I believe it's it does say acrylic polymer. So I should be able to add Floetrol and normal acrylic pouring mediums to this with no problems. And I believe I've seen people add paint to that as well. So to start off with, I'm going to um, start with my pigment first in one of these little containers and this is a brand new jar of Afterglow which I'm super happy to have received and if you don't know uh, Afterglow is a this little piggy pigment and um, these have just been released and you can now buy them from fluid-art.co they're my favorite pigments to use and I was sent a sample to test out so what I always do is when I get the, the jars sent to me after the samples have been released, I always just empty my sample bags into my jars because I tend to forget that I have the sample bags laying around and I forget to use them. Uh, in the past, I have given some sample bags to a couple of friends of mine who do acrylic pouring and they're always appreciated. Okay, now when working with pigments, always wear proper face coverings or like a mask so that you don't inhale any of this dust. And seeing as it's wanted to jump into this container here, I'm going to put the pigment into there. So because I've never used these pigments with a pouring medium other than the bloom technique, I'm really going to load up the powder so that I know I'm going to get good pigmentation in there and I've put about the same pigmentation, uh, same amount of pigment in each. Then uh, I'm going to put the pouring medium in each container before I add my tube paint and ink. So let's start off with the Win Modern Effects, Lux Water Effects, I should say. Um, didn't come with a seal, 
but it does come with a handy red cap. And yes, there's a hole poked in that. Awesome. So let's drizzle a bit in here. So this looks very thick, similar to um, the Joe Sonia gloss varnish that we use for the blooms, which is really good. I'm just going to give that a mix. And what we would normally call this is um, dispersing. And what we're doing is we're making a paste with the pigment uh, so that it will blend easier into our pouring medium. And this just helps to make sure each individual particle is nice and wet by that medium. And we're not going to get any lumps in our finished pouring medium. So that right there has made an incredibly thick paste, which is lovely. Okay, I like that. Then I'm going to do the same for the triart, and let's have a look. Okay, the triart came with a, a seal, so I'm just going to rip that off. Okay, that's in the bin. Lovely. Okay, and we're going to pour about the same in there. Interesting. So they look very similar when added to the pigments. And I'm just stirring these very gently, keeping them well away from my face in case any clouds of this puffs up. I don't want to inhale it. I may need to add a little bit more of this just to wet that pigment. It's very hard to judge out of the tryout bottle. I do like that the Win uh, Lux Water Effects has a little um, dropper style top on it, uh, whereas the tryout has the usual you know flip lid with a little spout um, but it's a lot harder to control how much you're actually pouring out okay so that's also formed a really nice thick paste and side by side let's mix these up fully first so I'm gonna give this a really good squirt into there and I only have an 8 ounce bottle of the Lux water effect so I'm gonna be quite frugal with that because I also want to be able to top coat these pieces with it, but I've seen that you don't need very much to get a nice good coat on your artwork. So because they are advertised as a resin substitute, um, I want to be able to top coat my pieces, and I also want to be able to make up this pouring medium and see how they work. So after mixing this up, I can see that it's sort of similar to the consistency that I would use for my blooms, maybe a little bit too runny for my um, pouring medium. And I'm going to try and mix up about the same amount of the Triart liquid glass. Okie dokie. But this will probably all be fast forwarded so you don't have to watch me mixing. And I've got a really nice luscious mixture there. Now, drizzling them side by side, let's have a look. They are pretty much exactly the same consistency. Yeah, I would say they're exactly the same. Okay, so those two are done. I'm going to move those to the back. And then we're going to mix up the ink and the paint. So to do that, I'm just going to take the top off the modern uh, Lux water effects. I keep getting the name of this wrong, even though I know what it's called. Okay, and I still have about five ounces left of that, so that should be plenty. And I've got no idea how much paint I need for a six inch canvas, so I'm totally winging this. And I'm going to pour about the same of the Triart liquid glass into the containers next to it. It's looking pretty close. Okay, uh, yes. Now we're going to mix up our paint and our ink. So in the next ones, I'm going to mix in some Matisse Cobalt Teal paint. And I've chosen this one, one, because it works with our color scheme, and two, because this one is known for seizing up my uh, bloom medium, uh, bloom pouring medium. So we're going to see how this does, and I'm just going to put a little bloop in each. And I'm actually pretty happy that I've got roughly the same amount in each cup. 
and let's give that a stir. And because this is advertised as an acrylic pouring medium that has dissolved nicely into the Lux water effects. Pretty happy with that. It's actually a really, really gorgeous color. And then we're going to mix in to the Triart liquid glass. And mixing these paints in, um, they have mixed exactly the same and consistency wise double check that still exactly the same okay so so far these are pretty much looking like they're equal products and the last thing I want to try is um, acrylic ink so acrylic ink is known for thinning out uh, pouring mediums. So we're going to give that a go and see how much we're going to need for each. So I'm going to start with three drops. One, two, and three in each. One, two, and three. And let's see how it takes to the medium. Oh, that's nice. So because this acrylic ink is transparent, this layer should also be transparent because both of these are clear drying products. And this is actually really, really interesting. So I've got more like a glaze with this than I have a paint. And it has made it quite runny. So there's not, uh, there's no mound happening. It's not a mound on a mound. So I'm not sure what style of pour I'm going to go for because this is very thin. And let's try the liquid glass next. checking consistency and yeah they're pretty much the same so uh, what I should do now is a swatch test so I'm gonna grab a piece of paper or something and let's do a swatch test of these three colors and let's see what we are working with okay. I've got a piece of paper just a plain plain white copy paper Okay, and let's move these out of the way. We'll bring this down. And we're going to start with the Lux water effects with the afterglow. And I'm just spreading these down the page. We've got the cobalt teal. That's a really nice, pretty color. Love that. And the dioxazine purple ink. And straight away, because I've only added a couple of drops of ink to this, um, it's very, very pale. So what I might do is add one, two, three, one, two, three, to each color. And just see if we can darken that up a little bit. Now, what I suspect will happen is if I pour with this, I'm going to get shades of purple rather than one solid color. That's better. Okay, so just that little bit of extra saturation has boosted that just slightly. And let me mix the tryout liquid glass. Okay, and we'll do the same swatch test. So I'm going to do them directly underneath each other. So on top was the Wind Modern Lux water effects. It's a bit of a mouthful for me. And we do the swipe test here. Try and get them the same. Okay, let's do our cobalt teal. For some reason my right hand isn't working properly and it refuses to grab the stir stick. 
and let's do the diox purple just trying to get a nice thick layer of each so we can see a true representation of what each one is but my stir sticks have slight curves in the end so that's making it difficult okay so from a direct comparison standpoint here these are looking exactly the same uh, same saturation same you know consistency same shimmer same density so i'm going to leave this aside to dry while we do our pores and we're going to figure out what we're going to do <laughs> to pour these so i have a feeling that if i layer these in the cup um, they're going to blend together so i wonder if i can do them in a small cup the same as i've got here let me see let me see where is my cups 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 there they are okay these are little two ounce cups and okay let's do a quick layering thing okay they're not blending as readily as I thought they would that's a good sign so I'm just using the win Lux water effects in this one just alternating my colors I'm going uh, purple, blue, pink, purple, blue, pink, so again I've never done an open cut pour before so this is going to be a little bit of fun to see what I can make. And let's use the last of this up. Purple, blue. Sorry, guys, I realize you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I've just layered my cup up. I really need to check my monitor more often. And pink on the top. So I don't think I want to do a flip cup. I think I want to try a ring pour. I'm going to set those aside. And I'll do them one at a time those over there and let's put this here so the other thing I want to do is I want to leave the paint or the pouring medium in the cups and on my stir sticks and I'm gonna let them dry so I'm gonna see how they are uh, peeling out of uh, reusable cups and things like that so I'm gonna let them dry so I've got my colors in there that's not gonna work so let's grab my board here Okay, and I've got my little canvas and I've got the Lux water effects there. Now let me take this up. There we go. And we have focus. Do I have focus? Where's my focus? There we go. Right. So now I'm going to do a ring pour. This is really cool. Now I do know that when people do ring pours and they've had enough of their pouring medium in the center, they put their finger there and they stop the flow and I did it. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> okay, this is pretty cool. Now let's get this centered. And now most people tilt their ring pours, but because it's a ring pour and I want it to stay in a ring, I'm gonna spin it. I'm going to try and center it and give it a good spin. Oh, that's pretty. It's really pretty. So what's happening is the afterglow is taking over and I've lost most of the purple and most of the blue. But it's looking like a really cool rose. 
So I think I've just got way too much paint for a six inch canvas. Oh no, and there's something stuck to my canvas here. That's causing that pattern to stick. So at this point, I'm just going to tilt to cover my corners. So far, it's got really good flow. So this one is the Lux Water Effects. I'll come back to the middle so I don't ruin my shapes. I do realize um, I probably did the um, <laughs> the wrong consistency for a ring pour because a ring pour is supposed to have um, a much thicker consistency that's a boo-boo on my behalf so what I may do is um, reattempt this I still have plenty of the pouring medium I will reattempt this with maybe an open like a flip cup because that supposedly needs a bit thicker a bit thinner paint but what I have got is a really nice um, effect from that transparent purple the ink because everything looks like afterglow now with a really nice purple color shift okay so this is the Lux water effects looks kind of cool so I'm gonna let that dry just off to the side here oops and I'm going to clean off my table or my spinner and then I'm going to layer up my colors for the try out liquid glass and see how that goes okay so that's the next canvas so I'm going to show you layering the cup we had purple blue and then pink I guess I have to commit to, to my failure um, because I didn't um, didn't think about the consistency of paints needed for this one. So let's just go with it, huh? But what I will do is I will use less paint. I don't think I needed anywhere near as much paint. So let's at least try and get a decent pour out of this. So I am going to hold back just a little bit of pouring medium from this one. So still the same colors, same layering. There we go. Afterglow really stole the show in that pour. So let's go with this. I'm going to put this roughly in the center. Try and find the center as close as possible. And let's go with our ring pour. Okay, so a little bit different um, in terms of composition, but in terms of color, they are very much the same. Okay, so one of the other things that these are advertised for is as clear drying resin substitutes. So I have here a handy dandy little mat and this is just a fluid art co mat that I've cut up into little pieces to make uh, paint skins on let's get this in focus 
Okay, so what I want to do with this is I want to uh, make some long snakes of resin and see how it dries. And I also want to do some blobs and dots. So this is the tryout liquid glass. I don't have any of the wind effects mixed up yet, so I will mix up a little bit more of that. But I just want to see how this hardens up in different shapes. And I don't think I want to cast with this like a resin piece because I think it'll be um, not exactly the same behavior. Yeah, so we'll let those dry and we'll do a comparison when they are finished. Now I am going to make some drops with the plain product. So just clear drops and we're going to see how well they dry. So this little applicator nozzle is perfect for making these little droplets. I feel like I'm going to struggle with the liquid glass. Okay, and let's do a nice big one. I don't know what what for, but let's try a nice big one. So we've got some little drops, and let's try with the try out. Okay. So definitely more difficult to try and drop out individual drops from the tryout bottle. It's possible, but not as great control. So I do like that fine applicator. And again, let's do a big blob off to the side here. I will say the tryout bottle feels much more sturdy. Um, and a little bit more professional than this little bottle. Um, though the Lux Water Effects um, has measurements on the side, so you can tell how much re uh, product you're actually using. So I've still got five ounces left in that container. It should be plenty to coat our artworks. So again, I'm gonna let these sit aside to dry. And we'll come back to those when they are ready. Hey everybody, we are back. It is now the next day and these are all dry, which I was really surprised about because a couple of people have said um, that the water effects takes a little while to dry and the try art I sort of expected the same from. Um, but yeah, everything is totally dry, which is awesome. And I'm quite surprised at what happened. I'm not surprised at what happened here um, <laughs> because yeah, I obviously mixed up the wrong things for the wrong pour style. But nevertheless, I've got some interesting results and I've got the dried results of our drips. So over here, I will show you first the Lux Water Effects canvas. And this one dried really nice. Let me see if I can get some close up texture for you. So you can see from that, that it is already incredibly shiny. As in, this looks like it's been poured with a top coat already. Um, I really like that because you know, I like the glossy effect on my paints. Um, but as you can see, my design has completely disappeared. And because I've got them sitting on these plastic bowls, uh, I don't believe that this was completely level. So um, yeah, design is a write-off, but um, proof of concept is there. And this one is the Tryout Liquid Glass. And if you remember, we mixed up exactly the same colors, poured them exactly the same way and somehow we've got a different result. So this one is more stable, I guess, and where they were both sitting, the drips coming off the bottom 
um, the Lux Water FX one is all pulled in one area and the triart is basically spread all the way around. So that basically just tells me that this was lopsided slightly so everything's pulled to one side. So I've got some really cool striation like designs on there. But the triart liquid glass, again, same gloss factor level. So let's try and put those two next to each other. You can see they're pretty much exactly the same. Um, so yeah. You can really see on the side there where that design continues over where it's dripped off. And this one has sort of dripped off more evenly around the edges. So my design has sort of spread evenly across all four sides. Now in terms of side coverage, the Lux Water FX is much more transparent. And the uh, liquid glass looks like it's covered a little bit more. But I am going to put that down to the fact that I had so much more paint on the liquid glass than I did on the... Uh, sorry, on the water effects than I did on the liquid glass. So uh, there was a lot more weight to be pulled off the edge here and to shear that color off. Uh, now, I did have a little bit of that tryout liquid glass left in my cups. So I decided to do an open cup. So all I did was put everything into one little, uh, one of those little two ounce cups and I flipped it upside down and I got this cool little tile. So as a pouring medium, I really quite like it. Um, because I'm not an open cup person, um, but the results that I got were, you know, I'm quite happy with them. So you can see it looks almost like it's been coated with resin as it is. So it definitely lives up to that resin substitute um, status. Um, now the question will be is can we put a hot coffee cup on these like we can on resin? So I'm going to let the that tile cure for a little while and what I'm going to do with these now is I'm going to coat these with their respective um, coating. So this one will get the Lux Water Effects and this one will get the Tryout Liquid Glass. And I also have some old coasters um, that I didn't put any finish on that I will also coat with these and I'm going to do the hot mug test on those in a couple of weeks time. So let's just see how they go. Now uh, for the swatch test, you can see on this, they look exactly the same. Um, they're both dried with a really plasticky finish, which is to be expected. Um, from the pigment, the afterglow pigment, the finish isn't as plasticky because that powder sort of brings that um, feeling down, I guess. But with the um, paint, because the paint dries to a glossy finish itself, it's made those really thick and glossy. And same with the ink. Um, they're very, very shiny and very smooth. So pretty much the same there as well. Now, on my silicon mat, I had an interesting result, um, and I don't know if it's a success or a failure. Um, let me just increase the brightness here on my camera just a little bit, so we can see that better. Okay, so on my silicon mat, I must have had this sitting at a very slight angle, because some of my drips have escaped. Um, now, I think the liquid glass, because it's in a bigger container, it stayed a little bit more liquid um, in the cold weather that we're having here, uh, than the... Lux water effects. So the water effects was a little bit thicker because it's in that smaller bottle and it was colder all around, whereas the liquid glass, um, it's got a bit more area so it can retain more heat. Um, and as a result of that, my clear drops here have basically run to the edge of the silicon mat, but they did not go off. So let me try and show you that. So yeah, the only ones that did that were the liquid glass, but like I said, I think that was just because of where I placed them in proximity to the edge and my board wasn't totally level while these were drying. So that is still wet there. However, the remaining drips, uh, if you remember I put 12 drips on here, the remaining drips are pretty much dry almost, and I can nearly peel those off. The liquid glass comes off nicely just like that, as does the Lux Water Effects. They are still just a tiny bit uncured underneath. But if I show you these, let me focus on that. This one is the liquid glass and this one is the water effects in this hand and they are exactly the same. The texture, the feel of them, the way that they've picked up the pattern of the silicon mat underneath, they are, you know, perfectly clear. So that is a pass on the transparency test if you're going to use these as a final top coat. Um, but both products behaved exactly the same way, which I wasn't expecting. but. Yeah, I would happily use either one of those as a top coat. So we're going to see when we do these, how they dry up and how they work on a bigger piece. 
And now over to our last test is these little drips that we've made. So if you remember, I poured a long snake of these to see if they would dry in a rope. And you can see from both uh, samples, they've done exactly the same thing. They've broken up into blobs rather than a rope. So in terms of holding their shape on a silicon mat, um, you can pipe small blobs or really thick puddles, but you can't do really fine line work because they'll just break up. The surface tension isn't there. Like uh, resin has a really good surface tension, so it won't flow if it hasn't been uh, where you've put it. Whereas these, they don't really have that surface tension. It's more like water, I would say. So I've got little drops, both exactly the same in color. Um, I believe the top one was the liquid glass. The bottom one was the water effects, or it could have been the other way around. Um, but basically colors are the same, the texture is the same, and again, you can peel this up. These little drops are pretty much cured now. So let's put a couple in my hand so you can see what I'm talking about. And I will go back and watch the video to see which order I poured these in, um, just to make sure I'm giving you the right comparison. But that was the water effects, that's the water effects. This one is the whoop, liquid glass, liquid glass, and we've got the water effects and liquid glass, yes. So if you remember, I dropped these onto the canvas or onto the silicon mat with the stir sticks and the colors are exactly the same. Um, the interesting ones are these dioxazine purple ones so I can actually see through those which is really cool so if you're doing things on a transparent background you can see through both of those in both examples okay and you can see in the light they're both really nice and glossy really nice and shiny and at this stage oh, I've just lost that little blob that's okay at this stage they are still very stretchy and when you break them apart they come apart just like a paint skin would um, so it's got a little bit of stretch and then it basically just gives way. Okay, so that's the texture you're looking at. Um, I do have some cured resin that I've done that with, um, but resin sets a fair bit harder and you can't normally just pull that apart. So these I may keep for embellishments on future projects if I'm um, making anything with those colours. And you could just pop, pop those on top and, you know, away you go. But for today, the last thing I want to do with these as a test is to see how they go as a top coat. So what I might do is I might take this inside and do the hot mug test and see if it leaves a ring. It has only been cured for a day, so I'm not holding out high hopes for that. But we can try just to see. Um, that was the liquid glass one, so um, I didn't have enough. I used too much of that water effects on these canvases so I don't have any of that mixed up and I want to do the top coat on these first before I do anything else. Now I do have a selection of Win Modern Art glitters that have been graciously sent to me by um, Victoria Wynn when I bought the uh, water effects. She sent me a few things to try out and Helen Oakland um, who lives here in Australia as well um, she sent me samples of all the things that she had um, in her arsenal, which I was not expecting. I was, she said, oh, I'll gladly send you a couple of samples. She sent me over 50 bags of um, pigments and glitters. So I thought I would use a couple of these. My idea with the ring pour was that I could embellish these to make a geode. And yeah, that's not going to happen <laughs> because there's nothing to embellish here. So what I thought I could do is mix these up with a tiny bit of glitter in one glitter in the other and just use the same glitter so it doesn't matter what product is going into them we want to just see that shimmer and just see how the each product holds its shape uh, when you pour it on the as a final coat here we are here we are and I'm really drawn to sorcery um, love that powder and um, there's another one so this one's electric she's got a whole range of these interference glitter powder so this one's called pixie wing it's a really nice interference bluey color uh, sorcery is like a green uh, sorry orangey yellowy gold you can see that sort of reflection there um, 
just deciding what I actually want to use. So, 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 so. Ah, purple. Okay. So this one is called Ripe Plum. And this one we should be able to see where the glitter is going on there. And I'm going to mix Ripe Plum with Sorcery. So I'll put my little box of goodies aside. And let's start off with mixing our glittery portion up. Well, I don't want to mix up too much because this is just going to be for some accents. And I don't have a lot of the wind power, uh, the Lux water effects left. Okay, so. I do want it to be quite glittery and saturated, so I should put the same amount of sparkly colour in each, I guess, while I've got that on. So it just needs a little bit more. Okay, and this one is ripe plum. colors I would usually use this purple but it's quite pretty okay and what I do whenever I've got products that come in uh, bags so I've had sample pigments sent to me in bags I've had all sorts of things I just push them flat on the table to get most of the air out so they fit nicely into wherever I'm storing them okay so I'm gonna use this one to stir up the win Lux water effects and that gold and the purple is making a really pretty combination in there and then I'll do the same for the try out liquid glass and now to give these just a little bit of color I think I'm going to mix in some paint and I'm going to use the dioxazine purple by Matisse and these lids are stuck on tight for me so I'm just going to put a tiny little bloop in each there we go and give these a good mix and I've chosen like I said I've chosen this purple so that it will stand out against the pink and because it's really nice and deep so that's just going to make it so that our paint or our medium whatever we want to call this is not totally transparent now you do have to remember that when you are mixing uh, glitters powders mica powders etc with paint that you have to be careful not to add too much and only use transparent paints because if you use opaque ones they will block out the sparkle of the glitter so this dioxazine purple is an is a transparent paint and you can tell that because on the uh, paint tube it's got a little open square here and if you had for example Matisse Cobalt Teal this one is closed fully colored in that means it is opaque if you see a square with a line through the middle or if one of those lines is colored in um, like one of those halves is colored in that means it's either semi-transparent or semi-opaque and all that means is it tends to be a little bit see-through but not entirely or it is more opaque than it is see-through okay those look pretty close okay so as a top coat i believe and i do want to point out as well that these have no smell like resin uh, by itself absolutely stinks but when you open these bottles you can't smell them and I'm going to do a sniff test I know you should never do a sniff test but okay that one just smells like acrylic and that one smells exactly the same um, if I had to relate the smell I would say it's like bubble gum almost that's really weird they actually smell like I want to drink them um, don't drink your acrylic pouring mediums people uh, but yeah they smell exactly the same they look exactly the same okay so we're going to top coat our work 
So let's start off with the Lux Water Effects. And I'm going to treat this just like I would with resin. And I'm going to pour a bit in the middle. And then I'm going to do the try out liquid glass. And I've just found it easier to take the cap off this. Okay, and let's try just using our fingers to smear this on. I feel like I've used way too much because this is covering very, very easily. So let's make sure I get the sides. But this is a good learning curve. So as a top coat, you really don't need too much. I feel like I have put a little bit too much. And I'm just coating all the sides, feeling where the dry spots are with my fingers. And I do like doing it this way so that I know I can feel where the gaps are. Okay. Now let's see how it flows. So I am just looking at it from the side and I can see that it is sort of flowing everywhere. So that tells me that it's got good self-leveling properties. And again, this one is the Lux Water Effects. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my hands off with a baby wipe. These baby wipes are a pain in the butt. They never wanna come out and they never wanna separate. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna wipe my hands off so I get no cross-contamination. leave that wipe aside for the moment and then I'm going to do the same with the liquid glass and spreading this on again feels the same so I'm not going to go as far as to say that they're the same product but they are definitely comparable like I'm not noticing any difference between them in their appearance, smell, behavior, everything. Um, and if you put these in an open cup side by side, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to tell which is which. So, at the end of this, once these are top coated, once we've found out how these dry as a finish, and I've, like I said, I've put these on literally the day after um, I've poured them, because it's the same product, so it should cure all at the same rate, which could be really handy if you're if you're on a um, time constraint and you want to paint, pour, get these out the door as quickly as you can. Um, yeah. Okay. So the tryout liquid glass went on the same. It's still not perfectly level. Um, that's because they're on these little plates. So what I might do is take them off the plates, put them on a board instead and then dry them on my table. So we're gonna see how that goes. Now, uh, I do want to move this around just a little bit, just so I get the full self-leveling going on. And with resin, I normally use a heat gun. So I'm going to do the same, and that's gonna be difficult because I moved my power board. Okay. So I'm just going to do this on low heat and low fan speed. And this should pop the bubbles. So there were a couple of bubbles in the Lux Water Effects. And again, a couple of bubbles in the liquid glass. Now, uh, nothing happened. So that was really anticlimactic um, nothing happened nothing moved it didn't appear that anything thinned out so that's interesting and I haven't seen any instructions on how to use these should probably read the bottle huh um, Says apply with a spreading tool or pour on and tilt to spread. 
That was the liquid glass, by the way. So, uh, yeah, I think I stuffed up already <laughs> with this application. But, YOLO. At the end of the day, it, these are advertised as resin alternatives, so they should behave like resin, right? Okay, I'm just going to smooth this out. Okay, so this will be a real test to see if the, this self-levels. Now we're going to put on our silvery glitter, and I might forego the pipettes and just put a couple of lines. Okay, so I'm going to move these aside, let them cure, and if they dry at the same speed that the top did, we should be able to come back tomorrow and see how they go. Now, I do have some of this mixed up left, so let's have a look at some coasters that I have. So there's this one here and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to cover half with the Lux water effects and what I'm going to do first is label the halves. So I've got Lux water effects on one half, liquid, uh, try out liquid glass on the other. So this half is going to get the triart, which is this one. I'm just going to use my spatula to spread this around and make a nice sharp line there in the center. Take it off the edge. And just filling in the little bits that I scraped off. And then let's do the Win Lux water effects on the other side. Okay, so I can actually see a difference in the two halves. I think I put a little bit more dioxazine purple in the uh, tryout liquid glass. So that's going to help us to see where that division is. So I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, you can see it. So you can see this, this half is the Lux water effects, this half is the liquid glass. So let's remember that for when we come to editing Mitchell to have a look at this. And I'm going to put this aside and let that cure with the others. Okay everybody, so my artworks are now completely dried and they've been sitting for about two days now. And they are both cured and dry to the touch, which is awesome. And my tester tile is also dry as well. So this is the a uh, small tile that I did with just the Triart uh, liquid liquid glass. Dip, 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 dip. Um, the Triart liquid glass, and it's looking very shiny and super glossy, which is awesome. Um, really like that, and you can see that it's got a really nice smooth finish. Um, it's not as perfect as resin. There are like tiny little dimples in it. I don't know whether that's from um, pigment, whether it's from bubbles. I'm not sure, I didn't see any bubbles when I was coating it, so I just think that's how the texture dries. And on my test tile here, um, I can see where 
one product was and where the other one wasn't. And I believe that's just because I added a little bit too much uh, of the Dioxazine Purple ink to one compared to the other. But if you look at this tile, this tile is the best test for this so far, I believe, because this will tell us if there's a difference in the product. So looking at this tile, you can't see a join or a seam or anything where those two products meet. Uh, the texture, the dried texture on the surface is exactly the same. Um, there's honestly no noticeable difference. And the reason that it looks a little bit lumpy, let me see if I can get closer for you so you can see that better. The reason it looks lumpy is because I've used some of the Lux powders in there and I used quite a bit of that, um, I believe I used sorcery and a purple. Uh, I'll remember the purple when I do the video or watch the back of the tape, but you can see that lumpy surface there and you can't tell where one product starts and where the other product ends. Now, uh, to combat this, I actually, uh, when I taped it up, if you remember, I flipped the tile over and I wrote which product was which on the back. So have a guess which is which. I'm going to flip it over. Okay, so one product ends here. The other product joins into it. And when I flip those over, the one on this side was the water effects, the one on the other side is the tryout liquid glass. Okay, flip that over this way. So you can see I just added a little bit too much of the Diox Purple ink to the liquid glass, so you don't get the full shimmer of the glitter that's in there, the Win Effects powder. Um, so you can use those powders with inks and transparent paints and things, but obviously it's going to dull that sparkle a fair bit, so best to use them in a clear medium. Now, in terms of the top coating test, um, I had some interesting results and I should have just done a plain top coat test. So I'm actually going to conduct that with two plain white tiles and the top coat test, uh, I will show you the results of that now. So this one is the Lux water effects. And if you remember, we just applied these straight onto the canvas, smoothed them out with our hands or with my hands. Um, and then I added drops of the purple uh, ink infused pouring medium or resin substitute, whatever you want to call it, uh, on top in lines. And obviously my bowls weren't level because both products have dribbled and run a little bit. But this is the water effects and you can see it didn't dry totally smooth, which I didn't... Um, I didn't expect, to be honest, with the amount of glitter and stuff that I put in here. Um, so yeah, it hasn't dried completely smooth, but it has uh, dried completely, you know, even, as in the texture is even across the surface. Um, and in those areas where the pouring, the resin substitute is um, a little bit thicker, so this, like, this one again is the water effects, where it's a little bit thicker, it looks perfectly clear. I can still see that beautiful design underneath. Um, I just wish I'd done a better job with the design. Um, as for the sides, all of the sides are nice and evenly coated. Pretty happy with that, and if I'd paid more attention to the sides, I could have done a better job. Uh, then we have the Triart liquid glass one. So the liquid glass actually performed a little bit better in my opinion, even though I had my canvas tilted off to one side. Um, like I said, the bowl probably wasn't level, um, and you can tell that from the drips on the side of these, that's where everything sort of run off. Um, so when you're applying either of these finishes, best to do a really nice thin coat, do multiple coats if you need to, and that way you'll avoid the lumps and bumps. Um, I will say that with the Triart, um, it is a lot smoother. So I don't know if I can attribute that to just the, tile, the bowl underneath being on an uneven surface, or if the product was slightly thinner, um, I can't really say. So that's what I'm going to do with my last test here. Um, in terms of using the product to coat something. Um, now, I asked a question in the uh, Win Modern Art group, also the Shelly Art and the This Little Piggy groups, uh, to find out if anyone had used both of these products. And there are a fair few people that said that they're exactly the same. Fair few people said, no, they're totally different. They liked one over the other for whatever reason. Um, so that's why I'm doing this experiment. I've, I want to find out for myself which product I can use and which one um, you know, for what purpose. So I have been told that the water effects is heat resistant, um, but I don't know to what extent that is heat resistant. And that's going to be one of my tests. So that's why I've got these two tiles here. 
I'm gonna leave these to cure for about a week or two before I do that test because everyone knows that if you don't let resin cure long enough and you put a hot mug on these, it will leave a ring. So what I might do is do the test now anyway, see if it leaves a ring and if it does, will it be the same as resin in that applying a little bit of heat will help that self heal. Um, and with the other, um, I'll leave it, like I said, that two weeks or so, give it enough chance to cure fully, and then I'll do the test again. So the last thing, like I said, I wanted to do today, so I can reuse these tiles here, is I want to coat each one of these in the respective products. And we're gonna do try out over here, and water effects over here. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is because some people reported that the tri art straight out of the bottle when they used it previously uh, turned amber straight out of the bottle, which is really odd. I haven't experienced that yet. Um, so we're going to test that over a plain white background um, just to see if there's anything different about it. So here I've got a black permanent marker and this is over tile. The other thing that... Um, I saw mentioned was uh, that the liquid glass could be peeled straight up off the surface of whatever it was applied to, which I've never experienced with resin, I've never experienced that with any top coat before. So that's something else I want to test is if I can, once this has cured for a couple of days, pull that straight off the surface of the tile. Now I'm going to put down black permanent marker. And I've also got these Krylon uh, leafing pens. I've got gold and silver. And the reason I'm doing this is to see if anything changes in the color when I put these down. There's no reason I've chosen these colors. I just had them on hand. So let's put... Oh, interesting. Okay. This gold leafing pen isn't very responsive today. I'm not getting much gold out of it. More a yucky grey colour and I think that's just because I used it over black when I did my skull pour. It is actually gold, it's just looking grey <coughs> under this light and I've got my silver pen as well. I'm just drawing a line on each. They don't have to be absolutely perfectly accurate. This is just a representation of, you know, some colours on the tile. And I do want to leave a big area of white to see if we're going to get any change in colour. So the first thing I'm going to do is set these with some heat. Uh, so that I know that they're dry and they're not going to come off when I apply either of the top coats. So just using my heat gun for this. Okay, so those markers I believe are acrylic based. Let me double check that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Propylene, glycol, monoethyl, ether. Okay, so these are alcohol based, interesting. Okay, so both of those markers are alcohol based which means that by applying heat to them, I've evaporated the alcohol out of there. And they are now semi-dry to the touch. So I'm going to apply gloves. I always work with gloves. I don't do anything in my studio without them. Um, I just hate having messy hands, but also when you're working with products, especially new products, it's always good to work with proper safety equipment. Okay, so this test is to test for clarity and yellowing. So, like I said, one of the reports straight out of the bottle was that the tryout turns amber. I haven't experienced that in any of the experiments just yet. Um, and then I will test for heat resistance once these have cured for a little while longer. Okay, so... Let's do the water effects first, which is this tile. Let me get different plates because like I said, one of these wasn't level. 
and I'm going to apply a lot less to the surface because that's what I've been told we should do. So again, water effects, that's this one. And I've got the Lux water effects here. Just apply, apply a little bit to this. And then use my gloved finger to spread it. just covering all the sides and the surface. Now I've been told this is self-leveling, so I'm going to pour a little bit more in the middle and hopefully that will flatten itself out. So just tilting of places where my fingers went down to the tile and it's not quite adhering to it. Okay. So the permanent marker has run just a little bit. Not too concerned about that. Again, this is a test for clarity. Dry that off. Okay, so still looking like there's a little bit here that has not self leveled. So I'm going to apply just little bits in those areas because I do want a nice smooth finish. And of course, I'm working with products that have not had time to cure. So that may also affect this. Touching up little bits. There are a couple of little bubbles in here, but I wonder if I. Okay, a little drop on the table was enough to pop all of those. Excellent. Okay, so I'm good. now I'm going to do the same with the try out liquid glass. Just trying to put the same amount on and I'm going to try tilting this one to get it a little bit more even over the surface first and then spread it out with my finger. Okay, just trying to make the most of what I've got on here. And again, I'll just tilt it. So even though it is self-leveling, I'm trying to treat it the same as I would resin, uh, in that resin won't go where you don't put it. We're just filling in all of these blank spots. And I will say that I don't have as many blank spots now as I did with the water effects. Even as I say that, the water effects is forming like a little divot in certain areas. I don't know what that is all about. It's almost a perfectly straight line exactly where the permanent marker has smudged. Okay, now I have been told that this is super quick drying, so I'm gonna leave this for maybe three to four hours. I'll come back later tonight and see if there's any change and see if they're cured. Um, and straight up, yes, I can say that there are no bubbles in the tryout liquid glass. Okay, so nothing has turned yellow. I can't see any evidence of yellowing in either product. So that's one test or one myth put aside. I don't know what that particular person um, had experienced. Um, it is possible with resins and things that oddities can occur. Um, so I'm not going to rule out. I'm not saying that no one's experienced that, um, but I haven't experienced that personally. Okay, so the last thing I want to do for today, I don't have any hot mugs in here. So I'm going to take, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to take this tile over to my, my home 
and I'll put a mug in the microwave, boil some water in there and see if it leaves a ring. So what I'll do is I'll leave a ring on the top and then I will wait two weeks for this to cure. So let's divide this one this way now and we're going to say day two and day 15. All right, so we'll give that two weeks from today. Okay, um, so you probably won't see this as part of this whole testing video, but you will see it eventually. All right, um, I'll wait for this to kill and I'll be back later. Okay, so here I am doing the hot water test on the tile for the tryout and water effects. So I've got a cup with some cold water in there. So the plan is to put this in the microwave until it is boiling hot. So that is 100 degrees, as if you're making a hot cup of tea. Some people don't have a kettle, so they boil it in the microwave. And that's my main concern with coasters. So on the top of my tile, I've got day two, and I'll check this again in two weeks to see how it's going. So let's pop that into the microwave, and I'm gonna set that for, let's go for a minute and then we'll see how hot that is at the end and we'll be right back. All right, that's one, one minute done. I shouldn't do that, should I? Shouldn't stick my finger in the hot water. It's not quite boiling yet. So I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds. I don't think it needs too long. So let's go 30 seconds. And I'm just gonna keep my eye on this now. Uh, what I'm gonna do while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna flip this over. So day two is at the top. That is where I'm going to put my mug and see if the mug leaves a ring. So again, these have only been drying for two days. So it's definitely not a full cure yet, but it's worth giving it a test. Water is just starting to boil, so let's give it another 10 seconds. Sorry for the crunching in the background, my dog's just decided it's dinner time. And not boiling yet, I'm just looking through the window, making sure that it's starting to boil. Another 10 seconds. And we've got boiled water. All right, so this is going straight onto the coaster. And I've chosen a cup with a ring on the base. So let's see how this holds up. All right, so it's been a minute. Let's have a look. There's definitely a ring there on both sides. The ring on the tryout area looks a lot deeper than the one on the water effects area, but you can still see that ring going all the way around. So again, this side is tryout where my finger is, so it's on this side now. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. And so definitely not cured yet. I'm gonna leave this for another two weeks, come back, do the exact same test. All right, everyone, I'm back in the studio and it's been, what is it now, six hours since I poured the top coat onto my tiles and we're going to see how they look. Now, I have been coming in periodically to test them and I can say that one of them is still not dry. So the water effects has pretty much um, cured or dried. Um, you can see here that it is leaving a couple of fingerprints if this wants to focus. Leaving a couple of fingerprints in the surface. It's a bit too bright to show that. There we go. So leaving some fingerprints there. And it did leave one odd little mist spot there. I don't know what that's all about. Um, but otherwise, the surface is pretty damn smooth. So let me show you, try and show you that there. Perfect finish on that one. And the um, tryout liquid glass is still not cured just yet. Uh, still quite liquid in the middle. 
um, and you can see my big old fingerprint there. I just put that one there. Um, so I can't say that the curing time is the same for both products because it is clearly not. Um, what I will say is that both behaved exactly the same way, that they are perfectly clear uh, when they did level out, they were perfectly level. However, the water effects is now perfectly smooth still, except for that one little spot, whereas the tryout liquid glass is slightly wavy or dimply on the surface. And I don't know if I can get that to show up. I will try. So you can see that it's slightly dimpled and doing a bit of um, research into this in my spare time in between these tests um, I have discovered that this is a an issue, not necessarily an issue, but it's something that happens with the tryout liquid glass. So as a top coat they both look crystal clear. I didn't experience any of the yellowing with the tryout liquid glass which was mentioned by someone um, they are pretty smooth. They'd be smooth enough that I would be happy to have those. Uh, now, with the texture or the paint, whatever I've applied underneath the two paint markers, uh, both the gold and the silver have held their shape. Nothing has moved. However, I do have slight bleeding on both coasters with the tryout liquid glass and the water effects from the black texture. So you can see that just bleeding slightly up into the pouring medium or up into the top coat and you can see that one here with the water effects the same thing happened so that would just be not allowing your paint or the texture to dry fully before applying the top coat so I will leave these aside I will let them cure and harden up fully I'll put these over onto my drying table so they're nice and out of the way and just like with the other tiles I will wait a couple of weeks and I will do the hot coaster test uh, sorry the hot mug test on those now I did test a hot cup on the purple coasters on the purple coaster with both the tryout and the water effects on there and I can say that two days after pouring the uh, top coat uh, it will still leave a ring so definitely going to wait until that is cured up a little bit more before I do another test on that. Now there was one last test that I wanted to conduct and I've, or I already know the results of this because I've already done the purple ones, um, but the test to see how they come out of containers. So with paints you can peel them out of plastic containers and reuse the container. Excuse me while I'm just cleaning up the little bits of dried product from my silicon mat here so yes with other products you can peel them out of your containers so I wanted to see if that works for both of these and it does so I'm going to zoom you in here and show you just how to do that so I have the uh, liquid glass on the right here and the water effects in my hand so I'm going to start with the pink and I just used my fingernail before, I didn't use anything to scrape this out, um, though I do find a skewer helps when trying to get any of these edges off. So I'm just using my fingernail to scrape up, get a little bit of a purchase on here. And this has dried quite firmly in the cup. And you can just pull everything out and it comes out almost in one piece. Uh, so depending on how thick it is layered into your container a skewer really does help and I've just cracked that container so I'm not going to use that um, and I'll show you with the tryout liquid glass so in terms of how they have dried in these containers in a thicker layer they have, they have dried exactly the same in these containers and they come out exactly the same so I did leave a little bit more of the liquid glass in this one so it can be I found with the purple one, if there's a little bit more in there, it's a little bit harder to remove. And the pigment seems to have settled a little bit more out of this one. But yes, you can remove it from these containers. It will come out. Just needs a little bit of elbow grease, time and effort. So uh, these were just the two ounce disposable 
takeaway containers that we have here in Australia. These are like condiment containers or something like that. Uh, so I have every hope that they would come out of reusable plastic ones. Let's try the blue. So remember the blue had the paint in it and that came straight out. So adding pigment to those mediums does make the medium a little bit more brittle, I want to say. Um, and it definitely settled on the bottom. But the blue, the paint, this was the Matisse Cobalt Teal. Just running that skewer around the outside there, helping to loosen that up. And then peel that forward and everything comes straight out. Very happy with that. And I would be confident to mix either product in these containers and reusing them again. So that's that little experiment. Um, what am I going to do now? So I'm just going to wait for those two clear drying coasters to cure a little bit longer and I'll show you the final result of those. All right guys, let's wrap this experiment up. So what did we get and what did we test? So the two products that I tested today were the TriArt Liquid Glass and the Win, Lux, Win Modern Art Luxe Water Effects Clear. So both of these products are advertised as a clear drying acrylic mediums that are also suitable for uh, as a resin substitute. Now the liquid glass is advertised as a pouring medium resin finish and this one is advertised as a substitute for resin. So uh, what are the qualities that each product advertises? So this one is a super glossy hard drying uh, acrylic medium that you can use as a pouring medium or as a clear drying top coat. And the Win Lux Water Effects is advertised as a clear drying top coat uh, that's suitable as a resin substitute. It's advertised as uh, heat resistant, so suitable for coasters and will withstand a hot coffee mug. And Victoria Wynn, who's the CEO of the company, has confirmed that uh, it's heat resistant to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 100 degrees Celsius, I believe. My math is slightly off. Um, but yeah, definitely more than what a hot mug of boiled water should be. Now, the reason I do the test comparison of heat resistance is because uh, the resin that I use, which is stone coat countertop epoxy, that's heat resistant to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is over 200 degrees Celsius and way more than anything that you would get out of the microwave and put down onto your coaster. So um, I compared everything equally as you saw in the videos and what do we do? So uh, let's go through them one by one. So straight out of the bottle, both products are like a milky white, let me try and focus, it's really hard to focus when there's only white. They are both a milky white substance. Uh, as you can see there, they look almost identical. And when you take the lids off, the smell you get is an acrylic smell. Um, I liken it to bubblegum, it's quite a pleasant smell, it doesn't smell malodorous or anything. Um, definitely not like resin where you can smell the dangerous chemicals that are in there. Um, so looks the same, smells the same. Uh, texture pouring out of the bottles, they pour out almost exactly the same. I would say the Lux water effects that I have is slightly thicker than the Tryout liquid glass. Um, I don't want to make any comments about consistency straight away because we all know that paints can change between cans, batches, all that sort of stuff. Um, temperature affects everything. So I'm going to leave the consistency alone for that, but I will say that the consistency of each product affected my results in small ways. So when mixing up into the paint, pigment and acrylic ink, they both received the additives very well. They both received them exactly the same if I, my, if I must give a qualification to it. Um, the one thing I did notice is the Win Lux Water Effects um, received the pigment, the afterglow pigment, a little bit better than the Triart did. I don't know, and that's just going off by how brittle they were to peel out. I don't know if this one just had more pigment in there and it sank. Um, I did try to be as accurate as possible as I could with it, but there's always a chance that I messed up. Um, so texture once mixed, they were pretty much the same. Texture on the canvas, pretty much the same again. Um, I did notice different, slightly different patterns in each of my canvases um, in terms of how the pouring medium um, behaved and melted off. So the Lux water effects gave some really interesting stripy patterns and the uh, tryout liquid glass gave a layer of cells on top from the afterglow which is really quite cool. Um, I did test the tryout liquid glass with the little bit that I had left over um, in my container as a flip cup and that turned out quite well. I'll show you that here. So this was the flip cup and this is just using all the colors that I mixed up 
on a single tile. So it turns out really nice. There's no top coat on this. That is the finish of the pouring medium. So I'm going to say safely that if you wanted a glossy, shiny piece of artwork, you could almost do this and get away with not sealing it. However, if you do look closely, you can see like an orange peel effect on there. And that I think that's the qualification I'm gonna go with that. Um, the orange peel effect will mean that dirt and dust will get trapped in there. So if it is a canvas hanging on a wall, it will be difficult to clean in future. Um, putting the two products side by side with the Win Lux powders, uh, they are almost identical on the, well, everything's backwards here. Okay, uh, they're almost identical on the tile. They covered the same and you can't see any distinction between where one product starts and the other one ends. The only way that I can tell the difference is I put a little bit more acrylic ink into the tryout liquid glass, so it turned out a little bit darker with a little bit less sparkle. Uh, now, I did do the heat resistance test. Both products have a ring on them after two days, so I am gonna leave that for two weeks, come back and do that same test on the bottom and see if there is a change. Uh, scraping out of the cups, they both peeled out of the cups um, cleanly. Uh, with very little effort, um, so that's great. It means you can reuse your cups and you can just peel that straight out. Easy to clean. Uh, as a top coat, they work really, really well. We did that both on the canvases with glitters added to them just so we could see how they would hold up uh, in layers of resin on resin. Um, they didn't bleed, which was fantastic, where resin sort of heats up too much and it disperses itself. These behaved really, really well, so quite happy to do embellishments with that wet on wet technique. And over a clear white tile, uh, someone mentioned that the tryout liquid glass ambered very yellow, uh, very quickly for them straight out of the bottle. I didn't experience that at all today, but it was worth testing. Um, over a white tile, we can see that they do dry perfectly clear. I'm still waiting for the tryout to dry. Um, the Lux water effects is pretty much done, and that was in about six to eight hours. So over the markers, the alcohol-based gold and silver marker, they were fine, they didn't bleed at all, whereas the permanent marker both bled in exactly the same direction um, for both finishes. And let me see if I can show you that. Oh, still focusing on my face, uh huh? All right, so you can see there that the marker has both bled up into this corner, this corner and that corner, uh, both bled the same way. So I can only assume that um, as they were drying, the pouring medium has uh, pulled itself off the corner a little bit, dripped off the edge and dragged the marker with it. So now we're gonna wrap this experiment up and uh, it comes down to why would I buy one over the other or one over the other? Um, someone mentioned that they look similar. So I did this video to you know, get to the bottom of it. And I've now been made aware of a third product that could be uh, very similar again. So that one is a Melbourne based company. So I will order some of that to test. Um, it's also advertised as a pouring medium and a resin substitute. So the um, the main difference is the, in these is the price. So this one is advertised as a luxury product. That's the Win Lux water effects. And this one is advertised as a regular pouring medium resin substitute. The price for me to ship eight ounces of the Lux water effects to Australia was 181 US dollars, uh, sorry, Australian dollars. And the price to ship the tryout liquid glass to Australia, while I did get this one from Fluid Art Co, um, there was a company that I managed to find it from in the UK and they will ship it to Australia for $40, including the product. So it's $40 or $43. Um, I'll find the exact price and flash that up on the screen. So there is a major, major difference in price. The water effects is four times the cost of the tryout liquid glass. Um, and if you're using this and buying this in bulk, that can be a massive, massive difference. However, what would determine whether uh, it was worth the price? Well, if the Lux water effects is as heat resistant as it claims, up to 205 degrees, um, I've been told by Victoria Wynn, who owns the company, um, if that can withstand temperatures up to uh, 205 degrees, which I'll find out in a couple of weeks, um, that'd be great because that's a nice heat resistant resin alternative. Um, and we'll find out if the tryout liquid glass holds up to the same test, though I have had several people say that no, it does not. So I don't wanna just rely on hearsay, I wanna do the test and make sure that I can confirm that for myself. Uh, so, final thoughts, I guess, let's wrap this up. 
uh, and I said wrap this up way too many times. So final thoughts are um, for the purposes that I personally would use them for, I wouldn't buy the water effects again just because of how expensive it is to ship to Australia. However, that's not going to stop anyone else from doing that. Um, please, if you love the product, keep supporting the business. Uh, however, you can get similar results with the Triart liquid glass. Uh, there are a couple of experiments that I'm going to be doing that are ongoing, so I will leave those white tiles out in the sun and we'll just see how they hold up to the weather and the sunshine here. And um, yeah, I'll keep playing with these. I'll see how the change in seasons affects both products. So I do have um, about half a bottle of uh, water effects left. So I'll do some playing around with that. I've got about three quarters of a bottle of the Triart liquid glass left. So again, we'll do some more experimenting and uh, I'm sure you'll see some more videos with both of these products. So I'm going to finish this video up finally. If you're liking what I'm doing here, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.